If you were a wealthy Londoner in the late 1700s, you might go to a hospital for Sunday service. Attending the chapel in London's Foundling Hospital was a unique experience, very different from what you would hear in a cathedral, a town church, village parish, or Methodist meeting house. The music was performed by the patients, young orphaned girls, and it resembled the music of the opera or the oratorio. In this episode, we will look at a special kind of church music, a blend of Christian piety, philanthropy, and the most fashionable music of the day. Georgian England was a time of rising industrialization and urbanization. This resulted in even greater disparity between the rich and the poor. One serious problem was child abandonment, the result of overpopulation, disease, prostitution, and poverty. The more affluent classes felt a civic and Christian duty to better their society, and charities were formed. Institutions were reliant on steady donations, so they exploited the power of music. But what kind? Cathedral music and metrical psalms were too ordinary, too conservative. Mind you, wealthy donors were also patrons of operas, oratorios, and concerts. They knew the latest trends and wanted to hear it on Sunday. So, several hospitals in England housed chapels that gave them what they wanted. Chapels were staffed by a special music department of organists, choirmasters, and choirs. Around the late 1700s, we see collections of hospital chapel music that resemble the latest art songs. Texts are drawn from popular metrical psalters and hymns. Though productions were lavish, the music's edifying purpose was still in sight. It was regarded as important education for these children, not to mention a means of religious expression. London's Foundling Hospital was the first children's charity in the country. It wasn't a hospital in the modern sense of the word. Captain Thomas Coram established it as a home for children abandoned by poor families or unwell mothers. It was famous for its choir made up of the patients. Young girls sang services and concerts for London's wealthy elite. Opulent productions attracted patrons and helped sustain the hospital. Starting in 1750, this hospital hosted an annual charity performance of Handel's Messiah, and the early ones were conducted by the composer himself. Pictured here is an admission ticket to such a performance. For Sunday services, the girls dressed in uniforms as pictured here, but the bigger spectacle was their fresh repertory, something that enticed a large congregation. Between about 1760 and 1809, we find various printings of psalms, hymns, and anthems for the use of the children of the hospital for the maintenance and education of exposed and deserted young children. Here we find music sung by the girls. Like the Methodist hymn collections at the time, tunes appear in the soprano above the bass line. Numbers called figures tell the organist what notes to play for the accompaniment, and this notation is found in contemporaneous music all across Europe. Stylistically, the melodies resemble the fashionable trends of the day. We see Italianate graces, simple harmonies, and melismas. Most of the music in this collection is cast in two parts, as a treble duet. Of course, this was sung by young girls. The contrasts of mood, sectionalized form, and many dialogues between instrument and voice bear the influence of Georgian verse anthems by William Boyce and Maurice Green. A celebrity of the hospital even makes an appearance. This comes from a larger church anthem of Handel's, O Sing Unto the Lord. The 1780 edition of this collection has an ornate cover depicting a female with children, probably a marketing tool to advertise this music. We find a lot of different music from the previous collection, like this curious English setting of the Gloria by William Byrd. We also find a special Hymn for the Children of the Foundling Hospital by John Stanley. It contains several duets, choruses, and even a recitative, something heard in operas and oratorios. Speaking of which, a curious addition is the printing of an excerpted Messiah, 
Note too how it's not in order, jumping from and the glory of the Lord to behold a virgin, and then jumping to for unto us. Why were these movements printed and abridged? Why isn't the music here? Of course, Messiah was performed annually, so the choir and congregation surely knew it, though perhaps its printing here reflects a special custom from chapel services. In fact, another piece of church music shows the composer's special relationship with his community. A special anthem was written for Foundling Hospital, though the choir of the Chapel Royal sang it, not the girls. Clearly, its text would have resonated with donors and patrons. The rest of the anthem reflects the virtues of charity and a mission to comfort the poor and sick. The anthem ends with a previously composed piece, the Hallelujah Chorus. Besides this piece, Handel was particularly generous to this organization and donated an organ for their new chapel. His fundraising efforts from both this foundling hospital anthem and annual Messiah concerts raised what is over one million pounds today. London's Lock Hospital was founded in 1747 to treat venereal disease. Unlike the Foundling Hospital, the patients here were of all ages, genders, and classes. They were too sick to sing themselves, and those well enough to attend services were hidden from the congregation. Therefore, the choir in this hospital consisted of the patrons in attendance. The congregation sang on behalf of the patients, but they still wanted to sing the most fashionable art music of the day. In order to do that, they needed to rehearse. The music director had to teach the congregation their music before each service. Who knows how that turned out. One organist who served there was Charles Wesley Jr. In fact, the hospital chapel was closely associated with Methodism. Martin Madden was close with the Wesley brothers and took charge of publishing a music collection from Locke Hospital. In a book entitled, A Collection of Psalm and Hymn Tunes Never Published Before to be Had at the Locke Hospital near Hyde Park Corner, we find hymns of the Wesley brothers more often than metrical psalms. For instance, here is Charles Wesley's famous Advent hymn set to Helmsley. It is derived from an old Irish folk song, and the version here is much different from the pomp and grandeur heard today. Rather, this is light and graceful, full of trills and appoggiaturas. Over 90% of tunes are treble duets with figured bass. We see many ornaments, melismas, dynamic markings, and contrasts between solo and tutti. It's hard to imagine an ordinary congregation singing this. Various English composers contributed, and Italian composers were even commissioned to contribute anthems. Of course, treble duets wouldn't be a problem for an all-girl choir, but what about a congregation of women and men? The latest research suggests that this music could have been sung in four vocal parts, sopranos and tenors on the top, and altos and basses on the bottom. In some cases, this does produce strange harmonic inversions as well as voice crossings that obscure the melody line. The Foundling and Locke Hospitals are just two examples of opulent chapel music programs. The Asylum for Female Orphans and Maudlin Hospital have similar surviving evidence of such spectacles. Also know that music for and by the needy was not limited to England. Venice housed a few hospitals, Ospedali that were famous for their high level of musical talent and performances. Antonio Vivaldi worked at the Ospedal della Pieta, a convent and orphanage that produced some of the best female singers and string players. Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote about it and said, The chapel is always full of music lovers. Even the singers from the Venetian opera come so as to develop genuine taste in singing based on these excellent models. What grieved me was those accursed grills, which allowed only tones to go through and concealed the angels of loveliness of whom they were worthy. He's referring to the fact that girls sang in a gallery hidden behind metal bars. Some girls went on to be established musicians and composers in their own right. This hospital played and sang at Mass, Vespers, Compline, and even put on large concerts. 
In fact, this hospital is where Vivaldi composed and premiered his famous Gloria. So now, let's sing a hymn actually sung in London's Foundling Chapel. As you saw, much of this music is not sung today, though one particular tune is. The tune Wareham by William Knapp, here it is set to Isaac Watts' rendition of the 36th Psalm. <laughs> 